On that stormy day, harsh weather challenged MOSPA's radar systems, hampering their ability to distinguish between high sea wavelengths and low-flying Neptune missiles. These ground-launched missiles descend close to wave crests, making radar detection tough. A ship defense system has a minimum engagement altitudes of 20 to 25 meters, which can't target these low-altitude Neptune missiles. Only the AK-630 can engage them with a 1.5-kilometer range, but just a six-second window due to the Neptune's speed. Finally, two missiles struck MOSFA, igniting a munition magazine and causing the cruiser to sink on its way to port. In this video, we will also be looking at the MOSFA Advanced Defense System, its weaponry, and most importantly, the step-by-step -step process of how this Neptune missile works, and not to forget its pros and cons. So stay tuned and don't miss a beat. This is the Neptune missile. Let's delve into its internal workings. At the forefront, you'll find the active radar homing head, which plays a crucial role in guiding the missile to its intended target. Just behind this is the penetrating warhead, possessing sufficient power to effectively disable or sink a ship. Towards the rear, we have the inertial control system and directly beneath it lies the air intake inlet. The latter is responsible for drawing in the necessary air to fuel the turbojet engine, propelling the missile at a swift speed of 300 kilometers per hour. Finally, at the very back, we have the booster. Its primary function is to propel the missile to a safe distance from the launcher, ensuring a secure and efficient launch sequence. This is the Slava-class ship named Moskva. It is a massive ship measuring 186.4 meters in length, 20.8 meters in width measuring the beam, and with an 8.4 meter draft considering its depth underwater. It can have approximately 476 to 529 crew members. The vessel is safeguarded by a sophisticated tri-layered air defense system comprising of S-300F, this missile system can destroy targets at a range of 120 kilometers. And not to forget the OSA missile batteries, designed to intercept and neutralize threats at both long and shorter ranges. Additionally, it is equipped with six automated AK-630 turrets, capable of unleashing a relentless barrage of ammunition to deter and eliminate any objects that venture too near. And at the front is the A-130 dual-purpose cannons capable of firing 10 to 40 rounds per minute. Now the crown jewel is these Vulcan anti-missiles meant to completely obliterate ships. The P-1000 was designed to counter American Navy ships, and Russia claims the missile can sink an aircraft carrier with one strike. If that's not enough, they also have this Ka-27 hunter-killer anti-submarine helicopter and uses a rather uncommon twin contra-rotating main rotor design. For naval applications, this has the added value of reducing the required main rotor radius and eliminating the need for a tail rotor, allowing it to navigate easily in severe weather conditions. This system is meticulously designed to function at a distance of 25 kilometers or 16 miles from the coastline. Let's look at the parts and functions of the Neptune RK360 MC division. A mobile launcher based on trucks can hold up to four Neptune missiles, prepped and ready for firing. Nevertheless, each launcher will necessitate ammunition, which can be furnished by the accompanying transport vehicles, each with the capacity to carry four Neptune missiles. The Mineral U radar is equipped with the capability to search for and pinpoint targets at distances of up to 600 kilometers, enabling more precise identification of threats. All of these components are seamlessly integrated with the command and control station, which can initiate missile launches with a simple press of a button. Let's take a look at how this works. Step 1. When the launcher acquires a target, the canister pops out as shown in this animation. Step 2. The Neptune missile's booster ejects it to a safe distance, while the wings pop out to stabilize its flight path. Step 3. After a few seconds of travel, when the Neptune missile clears the launcher, the boosters and wings fall off, as shown in this animation. Step 4. The missile ascends to a certain height and follows a specific trajectory. When its target comes into view, it drops down to 4 meters, intentionally hugging the waves to avoid radar detection by the ship until engaging the target by the OSA missile system or AK-130 turrets at the last moment. The million dollar question. How did Ukraine's newly developed missile penetrate Moskva, a powerful and advanced radar-guided defense systems? Let's look at two scenarios. Scenario 1. The drones were distracting the radar. Scenario 2 is where the Neptune missile was flying at a very low level in stormy weather conditions. 
Here the possibility exists that the Russian ship may have been distracted by multiple Bayer actor drones, causing added strain on the radar systems. However, a critical radar system to consider is the Top Dome Fire Control Radar, which plays a key role by using S-300 to destroy his anti-ship missile launched from the coastline miles apart. However, this radar has a limited 180-degree coverage and could potentially be distracted by drones operating in its vicinity. But the argument here is Moskva possesses multiple air defenses system. These six automated AK-630 turrets, capable of unleashing relentless barrages of ammunition that could have destroyed the missiles as shown here. Additionally, the OSA missile batteries, designed to intercept and neutralize threats at both long and shorter ranges, are the ones responsible for destroying the anti-ship missiles if there is a threat, just as shown in this animation. Let's examine scenario number two. On that stormy day, adverse weather conditions such as heavy waves, rain, and storms may have created uncertainty for the Moskva's radar systems. At this point, the radars might struggle to distinguish clearly between high sea wavelengths and low-altitude flying missiles. The Neptune missiles are launched from ground-based trucks and initially descend to an altitude of about 10 to 15 meters over the seawater. They continue descending until they are just 3 to 10 meters above the wave crests before reaching their targets. This extremely low altitude makes it very challenging for radar systems to detect them. The S-300 defensive missiles, with a minimum engagement altitude of 20 to 25 meters, are unable to target Neptune missiles flying at such low altitudes. This leads us to the second missile system, which is also designed for low-altitude engagement. The OSAI system also has a minimum engagement altitude of 24 to 25 meters, rendering it ineffective against these low-altitude Neptune missiles. Only the AK-630 is capable of engaging with the approaching missile. The AK-630 has an engagement range of approximately 1.6 kilometers for inbound missiles. Given the Neptune missile's speed of 900 kilometers per hour, this means that the AK-630 turrets have only an 8-second window to respond. In summary, the timing coincided perfectly with the weather conditions. The two missiles struck the Moskva on its port side amidships, resulting in a fire that detonated a munition magazine aboard the ship. The 600-foot-long cruiser, fatally damaged, sank on its way to port. Let's also look at the pros and cons of the Neptune missile. The Neptune missile features an active radar homing head, enabling precise targeting which enhances its effectiveness against naval targets. It carries a penetrating warhead with significant destructive power, making it capable of inflicting substantial damage on enemy vessels. The missile's ability to fly at low altitudes, often below radar coverage, increases its stealth and reduces the likelihood of interception. Cons or disadvantages of the Neptune missile The Neptune missile has a relatively short range compared to some other anti-ship missiles, which limits its operational range. Like other missiles, the Neptune is vulnerable to advanced anti-missile defenses and electronic countermeasures. It is primarily ground-launched, which means it relies on coastal launch platforms, limiting its flexibility compared to ship-launched missiles. This is the AC-130 gunship nicknamed the Angel of Death, a special video coming up soon, studying the engineering behind it in original 4K 3D animation, made from scratch with a very small team working on it full-time. So please support us by hitting the subscribe and notification bell for more videos to come.